There it is, guys. Frozen orb in last epoch. It actually starts out as a volcanic orb, but we've put the stat point into frozen orb as well as some other things. And I'll go ahead and explain that later, but let's go ahead and hop into some gameplay here because I was really excited to get this class up and running because uh, the previous video, we were actually running a minion uh, necromancer build. But uh, as of right now, once I saw that there was a skill that was frozen orb from Diablo 2, uh, I just had to build this class. Right now we are currently level 36, so let's go ahead, hop into some gameplay, and I'll basically explain some of the skills as we go on with the gameplay. And I'm going to showcase off basically uh, this class, which is actually the mage, and then we've ascended to the sorcerer here. I'll give you guys gameplay of every single character. <laughs> of course we're going to have to level them up, because um, in the very beginning obviously you're not going to have that many skills, and I think it just makes for a better video. So as far as our uh, skills go, we'll showcase off what we have. So. We have this uh, fire shield, which is just going to grant us damage reduction. And then in addition to that, I did put a point into the uh, fire shield uh, where every time we uh, cast it, we're going to get additional 40% cold damage, but we reduce the length at which it lasts by four seconds. But there's another thing that you can make it last a little bit longer anyway, so you can mitigate some of that. The next skill that we have on our bar is elemental nova, which is primarily what I'm going to be using. Um, just because it's very fast at clearing things, and uh, I have a lot of modifiers on it because I have been leveling up this skill. And then in addition to that, I was going to throw the orb. The orb technically has like a, a cooldown, so you can't just basically spam orb forever. You will, however, be able to get cooldown reduction, which will obviously help out, but the mana cost in the orb is quite high anyways. It's 50, uh, 52 to be exact, so that's basically... <laughs> A huge chunk of our mana and then the next skill I have which is focus I'm just gonna go and throw an orb so I can reduce my mana so focus just gives us uh, additional mana recovery uh, but we can't move during it you can actually modify this too which I thought was pretty cool you can make it so while you're uh, charging or while you're using it you'll get buffs for other things um, there is one where once you're at maximum mana you will be able to just start um, shooting out lightning which is uh, kind of cool while channeling you have five percent chance to shock and there's one where once you're at maximum mana while channeling dealing uh, lightning damage equal to your max mana allocated uh, which is pretty cool uh, that you can okay here it is unstable energy well while you're channeling you're going to be able to uh, deal extra uh, damage equal to three percent of your current mana allocated so i thought that was kind of cool that there is like modifiers for things that you guys normally probably wouldn't think of that would have modifiers and then um this is just our normal like walk because uh, I don't have a basic attack for this character setup, but I can. Um, then we have teleport, which teleports us to, obviously to an area. It will grant us shields, and in addition to that, we will also uh, get these clones, which actually will attack, and they will do damage as well. But uh, I pretty much showcased off most of the skills right here, but I do want to showcase off like this as a class, uh, but mostly, of course, the Frozen Orb. But as far as like uniques and stuff that we've gotten, uh, this is just for additional health and it technically has some armor. There's uh, not really a good use out of the minions because um, even though we do have teleport here, it uh, creates a mirror image. I'm not sure if this would actually proc uh, utilizing uh, the mirror images if that counts technically as a minion because they do have HP and they do cast. So I'm not sure if it works with it. Uh, it's probably better if I were to throw this on my Necromancer or the Acolyte. But there's that we got uh, this Tomb Binding Belt, which is I think it's pretty cool. There are sets in this game, which I think is really cool. Um, we only have one part of it, but it gives us 200 armor and increased uh, cast speed. But uh, the main thing that I got that I thought was really cool is the Invoker Scorching Grasps. So this is a ring where it gives us uh, additional health, stun avoidance, but the most important thing on this isn't really necessarily the Ignite and also the increased fire damage. But as a two-piece set over here, casting a lightning spell gives us 20% uh, more fire damage. Casting a fire spell gives us 20% more cold damage. Casting a cold spell gives 20% more lightning damage. And this one over here uh, is going to be like everything, uh, which is primarily what we'll be using. And then for the frozen heart, we have increased uh, damage with uh, freeze. Uh, increase duration, yeah, freeze duration with the snap freeze, which I'll show you guys all of the skills here. Let's go ahead and mix up the uh, skills. I will just probably keep uh the nova actually you know what let's just let's do all of the skills uh, over here so we'll go ahead and throw in lightning blast we'll throw on the static orb and then we'll go ahead and throw in snap freeze just so i can give you guys gameplay of course of everything uh you can however use skills even if you don't have them on your specialization but they're usually a lot worse because well you're not leveling them up therefore um because you only have certain amount of slots 
your skills will basically be like vanilla, if you will, but you can swap in and out. Like I can despecialize this specific skill, uh, but I would really have to level it up at level one, even if I was to go back into it later, which I, th I think that it kind of makes it so there's more permanency to the character. Uh, like you have decisions that will actually have implications. Um, but this is just a lightning attack. And we have this over here, which is the static orb, which kind of pushes the enemies back. Um, you can see it's great for keeping your, your enemies away. And then we have this uh, snap freeze, which just freezes them in place so you can go ahead and just very easily hit your opponents. Much easier. But like I said, I haven't modified any of these because, well, you can only modify uh, up until whatever you have for your level. And currently we have four skills. Uh, so now that we've seen those skills, let's go ahead and swap into some other skills. Now this skill over here called Mana Strike, um, it's a melee attack, but basically it returns mana to us. You have to be obviously within melee range, which is why I prefer using Focus to regain my mana, but that is a completely different build. Go ahead and throw Fireball on as well. I've already showed you guys Fire Shield, but we haven't shown off Ice Brush. Let's go ahead and showcase off that. And oh, I also want to mention another thing. So as you level up in the specialization or the advanced classes, you will get other skills. These three skills are from the Sorceress class. I don't have any of the Spellblade ones, but uh, obviously later down the line we will showcase off everything. Like I, I do enjoy this game to the point where I want to try to cover every single class. Um, I feel like as far as the Necromancer and, well, I guess the Acolyte that goes into Necromancer, I just prefer the Mage a lot more. Just like the time to kill is just so much more efficient here. But here's the mana thing where it just gives us mana. This is a channel ability um, called Ice Barrage, so you have to be holding still, but the cost is zero, which is kind of nice. Um, like I said, you can modify these skills and they'll be completely different, but I just thought that Frozen Orb was too cool. And then we uh, also have Black Hole, which I think is really cool. Let's go ahead and uh, equip this. Glacier Black Hole. We've already shown off Volcanic Orb. We haven't shown off Meteor, though. Uh, and then, yeah, at this point, we had, have gone through everything. Uh, on on this so far again um there is more sk skills passives that you can put into but there's not actually any more skills for the sorcerer at least as of right now in the beta which is the beta 0.70 c anyways here's black hole i, I want to get a group of enemies we can just cast meteor maybe on this guy hopefully he'll, he'll sit still it does a pretty good amount of damage but it's a little slow this is the glacier so basically it'll just kind of be in a line and it makes these spikes that come out of the ground uh, Black Hole is really good. It's similar to the one that you have in Diablo 3 as well. But yeah, I've been actually really enjoying this game because of like the uniques that you can find. Um, I also have the Tome of Elements, but it's kind of just there because it happens to give us that additional uh, chill shock with the elemental abilities. Uh, but yeah, there's really nothing too special as far as my gear goes. Man, teleport is so great. I really recommend always uh, getting that on your kit because not only do you get like shields when you teleport. There we go. So these guys are kind of getting pulled in. And it does damage, which is actually quite nice. So you can like pull them all in. And then maybe like freeze them. And then maybe drop a meteor, although they're already dead now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think we showed off most of the skills. So let's go ahead and maybe just. Uh, play a little bit more with Frozen Orb, which is, I think, what most of you guys wanted to see in the first place. Because, again, I like that skill the most. But, let's go ahead and throw on the Fire Shield once again. This is pretty much my build. and I actually kind of like the Black Hole skill, because it basically locks them in place. But, Focus is really good too, because it just gives you that uh, mana, which I think is quite useful. So, let's go ahead and throw that Frozen Orb once again. I love it. It's just so cool to see this. And... You can make it a little bit faster, um, and as well as like having the cooldown. You can see we just got another point into the fire shield, which will give us some uh, regeneration on our shield, but eventually over time it'll degen out here. So I'm probably just going to put most of it into warding, or I can make it so I can cast it on other allies, but there's no teammates now. I'm just going to go ahead and put it into lasting defense, because um, I want this to last as long as possible so I can get that bonus 40% on cold damage. But I, I really like how the uh, mobility in this game, even when I was playing the um, the Acolyte or Necromancer, the mobility is, like the cooldown is so great that, I mean, you can basically spam it. Like in, in between like every fight, you're able to basically recast it. You'll see that there is still some like optimization issues. Um, 
<laughs> specifically with Elemental Nova, I have this uh, modifier over here, which I put um, four points into. So every time I cast a Nova, there's a 48% chance to create a chain reaction of lesser ice Novas, uh, which is almost half the time I'm going to be able to basically get like smaller extra Novas just for free. And that's essentially what's causing the game to lag. Also, I, to better optimize the frame rate, I did reduce the graphics, but the game still looks pretty decent as you guys can see over here. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and continue. We got a bunch of quests to do. And I'm not sure what max level is. That's a question that I had uh, been asked while I was streaming the other day. I honestly can't tell you. However, I could tell you that uh, you can go at least up to 45. I'm not sure if you can just straight up hybrid these classes and make it viable. Because some of the end um, uh, talents on the Sorcerer are actually really strong. For example, this one over here, Mana Armor. Uh, it's basically like Mana Shield. Um, most of the integers in this game, what I've noticed is if it says like 1% and then like another integer, basically the integers in blue will be the ones that will be uh, changing when you put more stat points into them. And I want to say most of them, as far as I'm aware of, uh, when it says like 1% and then 5%, when you put two points in it, it would be 2% and then when the second number would go to 10%. Like each stat point that you put into basically gives it showing you what integer it would give you in the first place by putting one point into it. So if I was to put five points into this, having 25% extra mana regen would be quite huge, uh, simply because, well, there's, uh, as far as I'm aware of, the only item that I've been getting uh, that reduces our mana cost is the weapon that will give us reduced spell cast. You know what? I actually didn't even think about this, but I'm actually kind of curious. Let me go ahead and remove this. Okay, you can't do dual wield wands. Uh, I think the only game that I remember that you can dual wield wands in was in um, Guild Wars One, uh, in like the early earlier stages of like Alpha, which was pretty cool. But yeah, you can see that there's uh, reduced mana cost. But you can see there's increased spell damage uh, after you use a potion. So there are other things that can modify that are quite cool. And I'll show you guys the frozen orb tree uh, because I think that that is a very iconic skill from Diablo uh, Two. I know Blizzard usually was more like considered meta, especially for farming. Oh, yo, we just got a, a legendary drop too. All right, let's check out this legendary and then I'll show you guys the skill tree for a volcanic orb. All right, so, and then we also have another skill point, but I wanna see what that thing was that we got. The slab is a shield, unique heater shield. It uh, grants us extra block chance, block protection, 40% reduced block chance, 100% reduced damage taken on block. Okay, that's pretty interesting. What is our... Can you have negative block chance? See, this is why I like this game. There's just so many more integers and there's obviously uniques that matter in the game, which is again, the big point that I really had with Pagan Online, which I feel like they need to add, but obviously that can happen in the future. Anyways, going into, uh, there's block chance 35. Can we have, okay, so you can still have, okay, that's really strange because it, it, it says plus 28. What, and without it, we have zero block chance. So there's probably some default block chance that you will get, but, to have just straight up 100% reduced damage taken on block, that's that's pretty cool, right? Uh, I like that. <laughs> that was really so cool that we got on the video. But uh, anyways, yeah, I just want to showcase off uh, this uh, class because I had a few people ask me, yo, what's the best class in the game? I've only jumped into two. I can definitely say, at least from what I've gotten as far as gear goes, I don't think there's anything that really modified this build that much. Like, yeah, we're getting 20% extra damage because of the uh, Invoker's Frozen Heart and the uh, Scorch. I guess it's the Invoker's set, uh, which is completely different than the, the uh, Diablo build, which is, I guess, it's Thorns. There's a lot of inspiration 100% from the Diablo games, which I'm totally fine with. I'm totally fine that they call it Frozen Orb. I know some people are upset in the community, like, dude, you're just copying, but, like, I mean, it's Frozen Orb. It's, it, there's a lot of uh, overlap between, like, magic missiles and other things in D&D, &D, which, again, I, I personally don't have any problem with. It just makes it easier for me. Um, but... Um, yeah, there's nothing that really was like uh, super good as far as gear drops that could absolutely blow this class uh, out of proportion compared to the Necromancer video that I made or like the Acolyte. So I really think that so far, at least as far as my experience goes, because I haven't leveled up the uh, Necromancer super, super far, but I would say as far as DPS goes, the Sorceress is much better than at least the summoning Necromancer as far as the gear that I've gotten. I don't want to say that one is way better than the other because it might be more gear dependent because there's also this item, which I didn't get um, to use on my Necromancer. Is that an enemy right there? I think it's just smoke. But um, this thing over here, which is uh, minions have 40% chance to bleed on hit. And then I also got this 
um, which I thought was pretty cool. It's called the Beast King. It gives increased melee uh, damage, increased melee attack speed, 50% increased minion health, which was one of the problems I had on my minion uh, build. Uh, on top of that, minions take 25% less damage if you have killed recently. So sometimes builds are 100% dependent, so I don't want to say that uh, it's 100% that this class is better. I just wanted to mention some of the more unique items in the game. But anyways, I plan to make more videos, but of course, I want to showcase off every single class, and here is the Sorcerer. Oh, I did mention I'd show you Volcanic Orb because this is something that I thought was really cool. So, like I said, um, I went ahead and made the Frozen Orb build, but there's modifiers that can give us increased chance to chill. And if they are chilled, they can actually take 25% more damage, and you can get increased uh, chance to freeze uh, the enemy, which obviously that's pretty strong. Now, I'm not sure if I can actually do this. I will try it, and I'll test out out for you guys. Um, to see if you can just get 100% chance to freeze, because if you can 100% chance to freeze everything, well, they're not going to be moving at all, and then obviously that makes the game very easy. Um, in addition to that, you can uh, modify the uh, shrapnel to actually pierce through enemies, uh, which could obviously be very helpful if there's tons of enemies. And then, uh, when you get this, since you have to put points into monolithic eruption, which makes it so the shrapnel emits 20% less frequently, but the damage dealt is going to be much higher. And even though like there's like a like give and take with this, the thing is is that the shrapnel over here is going to be traveling faster and further and 20% more frequently. So you can mitigate some of the uh, downsides to certain skills, which again I think is really cool for uh, that build. And um, I also wanted to mention another thing. So while you are putting stat points into these connections here, when it says connection requires two points, that's two points in the previous area. So this one will require two points to put. Uh, one point into either one of these Which I think is kind of interesting some of them will be three some will be four um, Some of them um, before they they didn't actually specify how many it required as connection You just had to know that they were on the dots keep in mind this game is in beta So things will be changing um, but the the new uh, recent changes to increase the load speed was excellent Anyways, I feel like I'm ranting on but I just want to showcase off again this class and that is um, the Sorcerer Mage uh, build, and uh, maybe we'll go into Spellblade once we uh, complete this tree. I definitely want to get to this because, uh, again, getting extra mana can be huge in this game. But uh, yeah, there's so much to really cover here. Um, I guess I'll mouse over these real quick just in case anyone wants to pause and read them. So I'm just stat, uh, stat changes. Uh, increase it uh, was a cast speed there is there was a build that someone was showing off in the beta where like they were just spamming Nova's like at, like was a 500% cast speed um, which was insane which I might try because I really feel like Nova uh, is a really great skill in this you can also get fire penetration so different elemental penetration increase stun and freeze chance again I, I don't know if this integer is actually like like 15% flat it's 15% based off of like another integer that gets multiplied like for example in like diablo five percent crit is five percent crit um but then there's some integers in like let's say diablo where they have uh, diminishing returns now i don't think this game has diminishing returns but it's off of a multiplier that exists in the game if that makes sense so if this is like 15 percent, it might be off of a multiplier that would give you like 1.5 percent if that makes sense it's the same thing with poe when there's something that it, it goes off of the crit chance of the weapon if that makes sense um although this this weapon over here it doesn't specify uh so this is hopefully something that will be addressed once again in the future because if i put like 15 percent if there was an item that gave me like 15 percent chance to like uh crit if I put it into it, it would give me actually like 1% crit. So again, I think it's basically moving like the decimal place over. But it, it perhaps will be off of something else. I don't want to give you guys the wrong info, but I figured I'd just mention that real quick. It's not actually 15%. 10% um, uh, critical chance, uh, multiplier, and then when you press a spell, you gain extra stacks. And then once you have five stacks, you just can deal a bunch of damage. Extra armor and vitality. I also want to mention something. Uh, vitality in this game is not the same as normal vitality. I have two points in it, but each point of vitality gets us void protection. So it's extra, uh, I would say, like, if you want to look at almost like resistance for a certain type. Um, but, like, these are the elemental types. And speaking of elemental types, um, if I have the full set of the invoker set, we have 500% or uh, 500 to elemental protection. Look at our elemental protection right now. We're at, like, 30s. If we were to add 500 to this, um, look at the, this armor, like literally this over here is basically most of our armor. We would just have like almost 50% uh, damage reduction, um, which is crazy. But anyways, like I said, I uh, felt like I went over most of the stuff in the sorcerer that I did want to go over. 
Um, oh, there's there's also this, which is uh, Dragon Damage, which I thought was kind of something interesting. So, 10% uh, increased lightning damage uh, if you've used the fire skill. So, it basically, it's kind of like the set that we have, the two set bonus. And then this one basically reverses uh, the other one. So, if you use a fire skill, it gives a bonus to cold damage instead of lightning. It's kind of cool. Um, but... Yeah, that is the Sorcerer, and there's the Frozen Arb. I just thought it was awesome, and I wanted to share it with you guys. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and let me know what class you guys would like to see uh, in the next one that I work on. Well, this one, I probably want to uh, progress through the game, and then I'll make th uh, another class. I'm thinking maybe, like, the, the Druid will be my next one that I mess around with, or, like, one of the, the Void Knights. That seems kind of fun. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button if you want to see and keep up to date on the new stuff with Last Epoch. Anyways, take it easy guys, and I'm out.